Hey guys, I'm going to do a heal in your book section. Um, I've been getting a lot of requests for understanding the Greek and Hebrew. And uh, uh, I'm going to give you the tools to show you there's no no's or nots in scripture. They were all mistranslations from the original Greek and Hebrew pictographs in the fourth century. And uh, uh, once you get rid of that, you realize the scriptures are talking about the magnificence of men and nothing wrong with men. And, and the reason I went down this journey myself was because I understood how humanity is designed and how divine we're designed. Um, it was almost impossible to do what the scriptures were saying in English. For instance, if I say, thou shalt not think of a blue coffee cup, what do you do? You think of a blue coffee cup. There's no no's or nots. And so I'll show you, they're all mistranslations. They went from pictograph to transliterations, basically. And the transliteration was, was, was simply... Um, if I say the word hot in English and you would try to translate it in French, I'm, I'm not going to do it because I don't know French, but you would go, what is the H sound? What is the O sound? What is the T sound in France? And that would be your word. Well, what happened, guys, when they translated in the fourth century, they completely missed the meanings. And so just look at Genesis 1, for instance, as I've shared with you numerous times, and go to interlinear. You can go to BibleHub.com and click on I-N-T-E-R. You know, in English, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But there's a word in there, aleph tof, aleph tof, however you want to describe it. Um, and so it's 11,050 times that word is used by the Hebrews, and not once in your English or Latin Bible. <laughs> it literally says untranslatable. Well, I don't think they put it in there 11,050 times, twice as, twice as much as Yahweh, by the way, because uh it was just a mistake 11,050 times by the Hebrew writers. They didn't really mean to write that there because we don't know what it is. So we're going to ignore it. That's silly. That's silly. And once you understand what it is, you realize it's the whole core. It's the strength of God to create is in the covenant, the left top. The strength of the ox is in the top. Now, sadly, as you'll see, they took a left, Aleph, in the Greek alpha, and they translated it as no or not. So all the sin, unholy, take no, um, unrighteous, uh, unfaithful, disobedient, um, all have these no's or nots attached to them. And they're impossible. The scriptures are talking about the magnificence of man. And uh, here's what's really cool is, is what I've been sharing. You know, um, uh, the true you guys is magnificent. The scriptures we're talking about, the unlimited presence of God in man, not what was wrong with man. And so the more no's and nots you let go of and go, that's not the real me. The real me is the unlimited uh, power of God. In fact, I wrote a note to myself. It says, every time you release a no or not, you get closer and closer to your true identity, which is the limitless presence of God, where everything starts to flow in your life with ease. And the God is, what do you think about God? You share in the, what the scriptures were saying is you share in the power and attributes of God, the unstoppable power of God. And when you let go of all the no's and nots, Everything in your life starts to flow freely. That's really the whole goal. So I'll show you some of this. Why don't we start with, um, oh, shoot. Uh, uh, let's start with 1 John. This is a good one. Um, actually, maybe we should start with, here, hold on. Let me do this with you. Maybe we should start with where we get this idea of the naked snake and or the naked lady and the snake. So man and woman in the garden. But you must not eat. Guys, I'm telling you, the mind is creative. It only creates what you hold there. It doesn't understand no. So if you if you said you must not throw a rock through this little window, I've shared this before, your mind was not even thinking about it. Now your mind's thinking about it. And telling people thou shalt not do these things actually causes incoherence in them because their mind can only think it. And then they're, yeah, but I shouldn't be thinking that. That's evil. So let's 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 go look at this not real quick. <laughs> but thou must not eat. Now, uh, it's low. So it's Lamed Aleph. And if you go look at this, is the rod or the staff or the leading of the ox. And so the original letters do not mean no or not. Now, I know by the time it gets translated by Strong's and the, the Greek and Hebrew, even today it says low. But uh, guys, if you go look up the, the Hebrew letter, hey, in fact... Um, Here's another source is, is I'm reluctant to share a lot of these sources with you because they, they put the Western slant on it and they completely miss it. As I'll show you evil, evil, how it was translated 
Um, Raish uh, Ayin now eventually was used as as different words in the spoken. Uh, again, guys, it was original all pictographed from an Ill illiterate society. But evil, the exact same letters, Resh Ayin, mean evil, how you think of evil. Thou shalt not eat from that evil tree. It also means intimacy in your friend or close companion. So thou shalt not eat, I promise you, is you shall consume this covenant meal of the one close to you, which is the Holy Spirit. So anyway, um, but if you go look up no, this is a Hebrew word pictures by Seekins, S-E-E-K-I-N-S. And I'm not telling you to go get these. I'm just showing you different uh, um, different sources you can where I really want you to just get what does each letter mean? Because the interpretations have changed, but the original letter is what they, the picture and the number that they represented have never changed, the originals. So I would rather go for the originals. So if you go no, let me just look up the word no. Um, or I mean, hey, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. The, the fifth letter, hey. If you go look up hey, all right, the fifth letter, where are you, Lamed? Yod, that's 10. Getting close as I in. That's seven. So six will be Va, the tent peg. Hey. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, it literally says, Hey. It's a picture of a man's hands up, and it means low. It's pronounced low and behold. <laughs> it's low. Low and behold. And the picture of Hey, the fifth letter in the Hebrew alphabet, is a man like, behold, hey, when we yell, hey, it's also low. And it says, you shall, it shouldn't be no. It just says, you shall behold the strength of the ox that comes from the staff. What's the seed? Again, I've shown you, there's two stories in the whole thing. First one's physical. The man's stick, all the way, all the things it's portrayed as. It's portrayed as the vine, the, the tree, the staff, the stick, um, the connector, the nail, the sword. Paul's sword in the side. Oh my gosh, guys. Um, upright stake. Literally crosses upright stake. Well, an upright stake doesn't look like a Roman cross. Even if you go look up crucifixion or cross, it says stake. An upright stake, comma, hence a Roman cross. That's a long ways away from an, a tent peg, isn't it? And that which is literally what literally what it's the picture of. So anyway, let's let's look at that. So thou shalt not, it doesn't say that, is you shall behold what comes from the strength of the tree. And you shall come to know, knowledge in scripture is always, I've come to know my wife, intimacy of good, which is good for you, and Ra. Now, this is really interesting. Ra is Resh, it's the highest point of the man, and I in, you shall come to behold. Now, they say adversity. Well, why is you shall come to see or behold the highest point of the man or the head of the man? And uh, maybe I should just show you these real quick. Um, so if you go to, oh, here, I want to show you this. <clears throat> Greek. Um, what was I looking at there? I think I was just showing you. Uh, yeah. Well, let's just let's start with Greek real first to show you. So it says uh, writing systems developed in Greece about a thousand BCE. It was de derived from the North Semitic or Semite, where we get Semite. You hear a lot of words like anti-Semite today is anti-Jewish. So the Jewish alphabet, which came from the Phoenicians. Some of the symbols of the Semitic alphabet represented only constants were made to represent vowels. The Semitic constants Aleph, He, Yod, Ayin, and Vav became the Greek letters Alpha, Epsilon, Iota, Omicron, Epsilon. And if you continue, I'm just showing you this. Is, uh, um, basically, it's talking about the early Greek alphabet was written like its Semitic forebears from right to left. So it even read right to left. And it changed by the time, obviously, that was translated into Latin. But if we go to Greek, let me just go to, I've uh, bookmarked some of these, so they're easy. Um, list of Greek letters. So Resh, actually, the, um, I'll do the Hebrew first, and then I'll show you. Um, uh, Hebrew, okay. So Resh, and you can, guys, I'm, I'm using sources that you don't have to go to a Bible school. You don't have, you can just type in Hebrew pictographs and Tons of these things will show up. This is just one that's pretty easy that shows you the pictures. Okay. So, Reish means the head authority first. 
It's a picture of the back of a head, actually, like the shape of a head. All right. And I in, <clears throat> which is number 70, is the eye to watch or experience. So now let's go back to this word. Why does this mean adversity? You shall experience the head of the man. Why is that adversity? I don't, it's weird, right? Now watch this. So Reshayin, if we go to 7453 in Strong's, Reshayin, the exact same letters, it means friend, companion, fellow. Uh, it means friend. It means intimate. Well, this sounds like intimacy, exactly what I've been saying. The two covenants. Fellow, fellow, sit, another person, one who stands in reciprocal relations. Guys, this is, they're talking about intimacy. The tree, the stick, the firmness of intimacy, you shall behold God. So enough on that. Um, there's no, it doesn't say thou shalt not eat of it. God's not setting you up. It says, you shall have the covenant meal. You shall consume the covenant meals and experience the highest point of man. One is physical. The seed comes out of the, the male part of the man. The last one, spiritual, guys. Your head, no, not male and female, anthropos, right up here. When the pay comes, pay is mouth, the opening of the head. When the spirit leaves your mouth, you're no longer firm. So X marks the spot. Christos, it's, it's got the, the X marks the spot. The sign of the covenant, if you go look it up, is what's the sign of the covenant that's been completed? Mankind rest their head. They clean of their head. So they rest their head. It's proof that you, the spirit of God has been released from covenant and you enter into eternal rest. That seed shall not return void. You actually experience spiritual life, the eternal, the, the, the passion, the fire that never dies, uh, the eternal rest. So, okay, now let's go get into the no's and nots. Like I said, this is, this is deep stuff. You don't need to know this about, uh, try to explain this to a five-year-old. If you just want to experience abundance, peace, health. You don't need any of this. I'm just trying to show you that the very thing we were taught is the word of God was actually completely mistranslated in the fourth century. And it's causing a lot of the problems today, to be honest with you. So let's go to one John. This is a great one. One John 5, 17, all unrighteousness is sin, yet there is sin that does not lead to death. Is it possible? I thought any sin leads to death. So which one does not lead to death? Ask any pastor or theologian. They can't tell you. They'll guess. Because there's no knots there, guys. It's an impossibility. So let's go look at all this uh, unrighteousness. Let's go look at it in inner, inner linear, and I'll show you a couple of things. So that's 1, 5, 17. Here's how you can do it, guys. If you go to inner lin, go to verse 17. All, so everyone, pasa, <coughs> Paul's all, as I call them, all, pay. But let's look at this unrighteousness, sin unholy um you'll see they all start with this greek letter alpha alpha and if you want to get any word um what it actually means it's the exact opposite so this says everyone they translate it as no or not and i'll show you it's a mistranslation um everyone shall experience the decree of god and their inheritance of the strength of god that exists and this and the existence <clears throat> of this strength of God, which is your portion, you shall come to experience the uprightness face-to-face -face at Tanatan, at death. <laughs> Just talking about the Spirit's going to be released from you when you die, and you'll experience the finished work of the covenant. The seed has been released, the Spirit, and you enter into eternal rest. So let's go look at, let's go conquer this unrighteousness, sin, etc. All right. So, A de Kia. A from not, justice so anytime you see a and they have not when you see italics guys it's added by the translator and so let's go look at this alpha remember i showed you greek according to greek alphabet itself says it came from the ancient phoenician semitic uh basically the hebrew alphabet alpha typically no or not except i'm going to show you it never means no or not and the reason they say typically in italics because when they want it to do things like brother is a delphos it literally says from the, the the same womb or the womb of God, his brother. So anyway, um, let's go down here and I'll show you this. Alpha of Hebrew origin, the first letter of the alphabet, figuratively is the years, is the first. All right. So it's from Hebrew. Let's go to let's go to Greek.com real first. 
or at first, I mean, alpha. Oops. I'm just going to hover over this. So this is on Wikipedia, guys. You can go just find all these alphabets. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, exactly what Strong says. As the value of one, it's derived from the Phoenician letter Aleph, which is the West Semitic word for ox. So the Greek itself says the West is the Semitic word for the ox, and it means the number one. It doesn't mean no or not. Remember I showed you it says in Strong's, the Latins, and by the time you get it in English, it says typically means no or not. Well, there's no reference of no or not in Greek. And it says it means ox from the Hebrew letter Aleph. So let's go to the ancient pictographs of Hebrew. Number one, Aleph. It is a picture of a ox. It means the strength of the ox or the strength of the leader. <laughs> typically means no or not, except it never means no or not. It doesn't mean no or not in Greek. It doesn't mean no or not in Hebrew. Like I've shown you again, let's go to Hebrew for Christians. Now, they really put their Western slant on here, but even this, it's, it's interesting. If you go to Aleph, advanced information. Well, don't you want the advanced information? The letter Aleph is the father of the Aleph bet. The original pictograph represents an ox. It means the strength and the leader. Its numerical value is one. It's also 1,000. Typically means no or not, except it never means no or not. It doesn't mean no or not in Greek. It doesn't mean no or not in Hebrew. It doesn't mean no or not in Greek. Uh, Hebrew is for Christians, the Christian interpretation of the Greek and the Hebrew. What does it mean? The yod or the strength of God that's released from the upright stake, the maleness in the earthly realm, and the stake that's in the, the seed or the semen that's been released in the divine realm has the same grammatria as yud he vav he. So yod is the, the strength of God that's been released, iota in Greek, of hava. The nail, you shall behold of all beholdings, hey, hey, the vav within, Yahweh. The strength of God comes from the rod, and you shall behold of all beholdings. <laughs> so, okay. So let's go back to that. Oh, that's Ray. I can get rid of that one. So uh, Hebrew origin. So that's, so what should this say? Justice. Unrighteous is self-evident. Justice, the principal decision of its actually the rightness. So this says not right, unrighteous, the justice. What it should say is everyone, pasa, all, will experience the rightness and the justice of God, of Yahweh, the strength of the ox. Sin, the same thing. Let's go look at it. A, no or not, and Meros. Meros is your portion or share, your inheritance, your portion, your share of. So A not italics again no share no part loss not hitting the target missing the mark <sighs> never means that guys i know the, the well-meaning pastors priests etc all they did was take a bad translation from a bad translation bad translation of latin in the fourth century and they just repeated it through every bible school hence sense alpha I showed you this. I'm not going to do it again. From the first letter of the Greek alphabet, Hebrew. Maybe I will once more. Just to, so you get it. Alpha. Phoenician letter left. It's the West Semitic word for ox. It comes from that. Doesn't mean no or not in Greek. So it comes from the Hebrew. Aleph. Aleph. Picture of an ox. Means strength leader. Never means no or not. Hebrew for Christians. The advanced information. The original pictograph represents strength leader. You tell me when it typically means no or not, guys. Can't find it. Which is why they can't translate Genesis 1, Aleph Toph, because they like, what is this? That means the strength of the ox is in the covenant. The strength to create is in the covenant. 11,050 times they said it doesn't exist in your Bible. We don't know what it is, so we ignore it. I think it's very important. In fact, it's the very core of the two covenants of the whole Bible that it's talking about. So this sin means missing the mark, not sharing. No, 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 no. It literally means hitting the mark. The strength of God is your portion. It's the exact opposite, guys. Anytime you see the A, uh, alpha, unrighteous, unholy, we'll, we'll go through a few of these words, and I'll show you the oohs and the, the ooks and the mays too. So this literally says, all shall experience the rightness of, of the strength of the ox, and everyone shall receive their portion or their inheritance of the strength of the ox, which exists 
And there is the strength of an inheritance. Not, no, let's go look at this. Omicron Upsilon, okay? Omicron Upsilon in Greek. Objectively, again, in parentheses, italics, I mean, ruling it out as fact. Mm, 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 mm. Let's go see. In the manuscripts, it means a left. Well, what does the left mean? The strength of the ox never means no or not. Or it means low and I in. Low, like low and behold. Now I get it in modern, it translates as no or not. But if you just take the letters, see, humanity does not understand no or not, guys. We're, we're divinely creators, divinely creative. And we say no, your mind doesn't see it. Thou shalt not think of a blue coffee cup. Come on, it's so simple once you get it. That's why you know it can't be there. So this is Lamed, the staff or the rod, the strength of God. The ox is in the staff or the Lamed, the rod. And Ayin, it means to, to experience see, behold. Okay. Now, they, the Hebrew, modern Hebrew, again, um, uses different words. But the original guys, there was no no or not anywhere. Okay. So <clears throat> it doesn't say that. So what does Omicron Upsilon mean? Omicron Upsilon. So if we go back to the Greek alphabet, okay. Here's Omicron in the classic, uh, in contrast to Omega, from the Greek Phoenician letter. Oops, here. I can't. There it is. The letters derived from Venetian letter I-N. Okay. So it's from the I-N. And there's a big O and the last O, Omega, which is the last letter. They added four letters in, in modern Greek. Um, but it says it's from the Greek letter I-N. Or the Hebrew letter I-N. So let's go to Hebrew I letter I-N. Number 70, it means the eye to watch or experience. Okay, we've seen that one before. All right. Remember, this is the strength of God. Lo, you shall behold. Um, and then there's this Upsilon. So if you go look, I, I shared the, the original part. Upsilon came from Vav, but I'll, I'll just show you this again. <clears throat> so it looks like the little ups, upside down, um, upside down U, basically. So the letter of the Greek alphabet, it has a value of 400, is derived from the Asian letter, Vav. So, okay, what's Vav? Vav is a nail secure ad. The original, it was a, a tent peg. <laughs> so if you go, if you go, let's go. So if you look at this, um, you shall come to see or experience a tent peg. It doesn't mean no. It means intimacy, guys. It doesn't mean really doubt this fact is you shall come to behold the upright stake, the tent peg. So let's go. Let's just go see for fun what uh, Hebrew for Christian says about Vav. Let's go look at the advanced information. Pictograph, variable of six, looks like a tent peg. Well, I wonder what that is. <laughs> what does a tent peg look like to you except for maleness, uprightness, right? Never means no or not again. So what in the world is this saying? So this existence of the strength of God, which is your inheritance, you shall come to experience and see the uprightness, the tent peg face to face pros in intimacy when you die. It's talking about something good. Not unto death. There is no sin that doesn't lead to death, guys. Come on. I should show you it's not there. All right. I'll just show you a couple more. And just, guys, anytime you see anything negative about man, or thou shalt not, or do not, or take no. Um, go to it, and you go, oh, go to the interlinear, and go, you're going to want to find one of these aus, aux, uh, if you go to this. Au, aux, when they add a K, it's just, uh, it's literally, you shall come to experience the uprightness of the covering, blessing. Um, it's it's cough, and it says, uh, when it's covered, when you're covered, uh, when a man covers a woman, it means he's having intimacy. And uh, by the way, this is where, um, all the religious societies, because they take this wrong, it says, uh, it says the man maleness covers the woman, physical intimacy, but but God covers anthropos. If you go look at it, it says mankind, not gender specific. But every religion that misinterprets it makes the women be covered because they said, oh, uh, uh, man covers the woman, but God's the covering of man. So they they create this hierarchy that God, man, woman. And any really religious society, they usually make the ladies wear coverings 
And the more religious they are, the more they have to cover. <laughs> Ladies, there's nothing in scripture that says you're anything less than man. I promise you, mistranslation again of scripture because they didn't understand the pictographs. So that's that's no or not auch. Okay, I'm going to get rid of some of these windows. So uh, 1 John 5, 17, I can get rid of that. Now let's look at may. May, not willing, not, not. All these different verses. Um, do not say within and any longer if not being cast out. Every jot and tittle, no jot or tittle shall not pass away. Let's go look at these knots, okay? It's mem eta. And I'll show you what these are. Again, no or not in parentheses, subjectively ruling out. Does it mean that? What, how was it used in the Septuagint? It was used as L, Aleph, the strength of the ox is in the rod. And Ayin, you shall come to behold or see. What shall you come to behold or see? The strength of God is in the, the rod, the seed. That's where the act of create is, guys. None of us would be here. You and I would not be here if, you're, if our mothers did not experience what comes from the upright stick, the, the tent peg. El Shaddai, the passion of God. El Ohim. This doesn't mean <laughs> no, guys. So what does it mean? Let's go look at this mem eta. All right. So it looks like kind of a little U with a, a squiggly down here. So let's go see what it's. Let's, I can get rid of this now. I just wanted to show you that Greek came from Hebrew originally and it literally read right to left. So where's that little? Uh, here's a ta. Um, where's the little? Uh, basically the the U, which I'm trying to show you. Um, with a little thing uh, here. So mu, mu in Greek has the value of, fifth, of 40. Mu is derived from the Egyptian hieroglyphic symbol for water, which had been simplified by Phoenicians and named after the word for water to become mem, mem. All right, so mem, I wanna just show you something. If you go look up, uh, uh, what does it actually mean? Um, Hebrew mem. 40 days, 40 weeks. Ladies, what happens at 40 days and what happens at 40 weeks? Here's Hebrew today. I'm not going to go into it. You're going to go do this. The numerical value of the letters mem is 40. It represents rightness or maturity. This is because according to Jewish tradition, 40 days after conception, the fetus begins to take on human form. And at 40 weeks, what happens? It's cast out of the body. New life. Number eight, the casting out. The separation of this picture of a fence where it was a house, you and I, are the tabernacle, there's a line between it. When your ladies, when the woman, when the baby leaves your womb, now what are there? There are two houses, the casting out, right? And by the way, if you go look at God never cast out Adam and Eve from the garden as something as negative, there's a left tops that the Hebrew word 11,050 times that aren't translated all over in there. The strength of God is in the covenant and the casting out. So Anyway, not, there wasn't two two people in a garden naked, and God got so mad because the lady talked to a snake. That's silly. In fact, snake, although is is tet. If you go look it up, it's it in in uh, Hebrew and Greek. It's a picture of a serpent, which is why it says unless the the serpent has risen up the stake or the pole, uh, the endless life, um, you shall die in the wilderness. Which is I've shared that with you over and over. The snake. The the re, the narrative in the the garden where it says was more wise and cunning, snake guys. If you go to your your dental office, your um your doctor's office, your veterinarian office, what is it a picture of? It's a picture of a snake on an upright pole. Because the snake, when it laid down its skin, did not die. And the great news of Scripture, guys, is when you die, when you lay down this flesh, and your the spirit is cast out of this body which is really the whole story of Exodus. It exits you when you exit this, this slavery, this bond, this bound to the skin. That was the eternal victory is what it talked about. That was the covenant of all covenants. First covenant is we enjoy this life. Second covenant is the eternal rest, the covenant of all covenants. When the spirit lays down the body, you shall not die, which was the serpent. So anyway, you can go look it up, guys. It literally say the serpent was the picture of the, the healing of the flesh. Until the fourth century, and it took on a negative meaning by the Latins. <laughs> what could go wrong there? So anyway, all right. So let's go look at this. Mem, uh, for the muddy waters, right? So what does it mean? 
mem number 40 water chaos blood uh and blood to the hebrew guys you got to understand is not hemoglobin it's not red it's a glistening crown on the head of the man it's dam it's the let what comes out of the doorway the door to move or the entrance um mem the mighty waters that incubate in 40 days and gives birth in 40 weeks that comes out of the door well i haven't seen if i cut my finger cast a seed that creates new life but i have seen what comes out of the upright man that enters into the garden of the woman and in 40 days incubates and the fetus starts and in 40 weeks she casts that baby out in fact that mighty waters the strength of the ocean is what it was talking about the strength of god the unstoppable strength and power of the ocean of god <clears throat> that's the 40 the mem i just showed you that what incubates in 40 days ripeness maturity is what it means in hebrew what comes out of the doorway um that's semen guys blood to the hebrew was semen it was not what we cutting yourself and with this picture um i'll just leave it at that so then if you go to uh if you go to hebrew for christians let's go look at mem number 40 uh the pictograph, the pictograph of Mem looks like a wave of water. There's this burst of water that comes out. Very interesting. If you go look at the grammatria again, it's 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 interesting to me. It's from Vav and Kaf. The covering of the nail is Yudhe Vav He. Means all the same thing over and over and over, guys. So that's May. Um, means the mighty waters Eta. So let's look at this kind of like an N with the. So the this is Mem, the mighty waters. Right. And if you go look at this eta, here it is. <clears throat> Seventh letter of the Greek alphabet is uh, blah blah blah. Um here, let me find it. Uh ancient Greek, seventh letter of the Greek. Where does it say? Yeah, here it is. Eta was derived from a Phoenician letter chet. Remember, it's the two, the fence. There was a house, and now there's two houses, it's the casting out, literally. Chet. So let's go look up. Phoenician letter ket or the Jewish letter ket. Ket, the wall, the fence, the separation. The reason it's called the day of the new beginnings or the new life is because when you're cast out of your mother, there's a new life. When the spirit's cast out of a human body, there's you enter into the new life, the spiritual life. You shall not die. You shall not die when you're cast out, when the spirit leaves the body. Ket, all right? <clears throat> and if you go look for Hebrew for Christians, it'll say pretty much the same thing. There's two of you now. Okay. Pictograph, left bet and radical of eight. Ket looks like a wall or fence. <clears throat> the Vav and Azayin join at the top of the thin connecting line. So the upright man and the finished man. Anyway, it's a, the picture was of a fence. There's two the, of the casting out. It literally means to cast out if you go look at it. Well, the seed is always what's cast out of man, and the spirit is what's the, the last seed is cast out of the human body. So may, does it does it typically mean no or not in italics? Never means no or not in the original Greek or the Hebrew. So get rid of all the no's and not's, and then you'll find it. Okay? All right. Uh, oh, oh, uh, let's see. Ude, here's, here's the last one I'll share with you. It is no longer nothing, no one, um, <clears throat> no one with anyone, no one, but no one puts a patch, no man putteth a piece. There is nothing. It's an impossibility, guys. That's not how we're designed. Ooh, no, we're not. I just showed you what that means. It says you shall come to experience uh, the upright stake and what comes from and oneness, heis. So anyway, uh, or there's udais. This is trans this Omicron Epsilon is translated no. It's not no, it's not no. It means you shall come to behold or experience the 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 upright stick and then delet. Ice, if you go look up ice, let me just show you this real quick. Um, ice, uh, ice, ice. So translate that as two, into, that's that's better translation, into, into, into. So if you look at ice, what does it mean? Properly into, literally motion into, into implies penetration under union. For a particular purpose or result. What is that purpose or result? To create. So ice. Even if you look at this, this is epsilon, which is hey, you shall behold. Shin is is 
the passion. It's the consumption of, it's either a picture of a tooth. Um, uh, <clears throat> it's a, the peak, I'm looking at shin. It's the passion. It's the double vav, guys. It's the vav of all vavs. The uprightness, maleness of all maleness. And it's a picture of a tooth, the point of a rock, a peak, the devourer to consume. So it's the covenant meal. It's a picture of a tooth. I shall eat this meal. Okay. And the iota, the strength of God, the 10, that's your lease. So literally ice, indicating the point reached or entered into a place in time, properly unto, into, literally motion into which implies penetration unto union. Sounds like intimacy, doesn't it? So, um, and it literally says, you shall behold the sheen, <clears throat> the vav of all vavs, and the strength of God, which comes from within. That's ice. So then you get, uh, I can get rid of May now. I'm showing you that. I can get rid of this. So I can get rid of Omicron Epsilon. Let's look at this ice. Ooh, dice. So you shall come to behold the uprightness. That Omicron Epsilon is translated as no. Doesn't mean no. Dice. Ice, this last part. And here's what you want to understand, guys. Once you understand the root in the Greek and Hebrew, the two or three letter roots, they never change. They're always the same because they were pictures. They, they were meanings. So this ice is, you shall behold the, the, the finished work, the 10 of God that comes from the passion of God and what comes out of the doorway, the let. So, um, udais, utais, udan, you'll, you'll see these over and over again. There's no nor nots anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Now, why does this, uh, why does this all matter? Frankly, because the concept, this, this, this word sin and thou shalt not are not in the original Greek and Hebrew, guys. Nothing causes more shame, guilt than thinking than telling somebody they're a sinner or separated from God. And nothing could be further from the truth. You were born in perfection. You will always be perfect. Now, I know you strong Christians are um, going to fight me because you love your sin. You love judgment. I'm just telling you it's not there. What's really true is the unconditional love of God. So you're not going to convince me. I don't want to hear your stuff. Or what about this verse? Um, <clears throat> because I know that's not what it is. You know why? Because I know that's not how life works. Because how life works never changes, guys. And that, that's why we're getting testimonies after testimonies. You remove any no's or nots. You remove any negative, any concept of your bad, your dirty. And watch the unconditional love and the limitlessness of God start to prosper in, in God's, in your life. And so this is kind of interesting is... Um, you know, this is from happiness is free. <laughs> the very essence of our beingness, which is what scripture is actually talking about, has no limits. It's eternal. I saw that our only limits I had were the ones that I accepted. I am not. I'm a sinner. I'm unrighteous. I'm unholy. I don't have enough faith. All those start with that alpha or there's an ooh, may or an ooh, dice or an auk there. It says, uh, when you get rid of that, you simply are the unlimited being that you are. So when you get rid of all the no's and nots, what I've been sharing, which aren't there in the original Greek and Hebrew, take no is not there. I know that's been, you know, people out try take no. Take no thought about a, a, a blue coffee cup. Not there, guys. It doesn't work. Good luck with all that. The scriptures of scripture, the more you let go of every negative, I am not good enough. I'm a sinner. That person's ungodly. I'm ungodly. God will not bless me. God will not bless them. The problem we have with this country, there's no noise or nots anywhere in scripture. Let go of any feeling that there's any lack. And what's always been true about you, the unlimited, unconditional love of God will start to flow with no effort. And your life will turn around, guys. I promise, I promise, I promise.